Any skiers or snowboarders out there know it has been a great year for snowfall in California. I was just looking at some of the numbers out there and especially in the southern Sierra, we have picked up maybe 200% of the snow that you would expect at this point in time. And then when you compare how much snow we've seen this season already compared to how much snow you usually see in an entire year, we've exceeded that and in some places like exceeded that by a large amount. So pretty great start to the season, but it got me thinking about why is the California snowpack so important? I know it's great for all the skiers and snowboarders out there, but there are other important reasons when it comes to wildlife, vegetation, and then the one that we talk about a lot, the water supply, and then also has some impacts on the California drought. So just wanted to learn a little bit more about what's going on with the California snowpack and why it is as important as it is. So just diving into Meteorology Insider here, the importance of California snowpack, understanding the role of winter precipitation. So when we think about snow, we often associate it with winter fun, such as skiing or building snowmen. However, for California, snow has a much more critical role to play. In this post, we will explore the importance of California snowpack, understanding the role of winter precipitation in the state's water supply and ecosystem. So it's kind of setting the stage already with the last four words there in the water supply and ecosystem. So that's a big part of the reason it's as important as it is. But first off, might, might have been the first thing I should have said when I started using this term at the beginning of the video, but what is snowpack? So... Before we delve into the importance of California's snowpack, we need to define what it is. A snowpack refers to the accumulation of snow on the ground over time, which can vary in depth and density depending on the temperature, humidity, and precipitation levels. So that's kind of an important distinction there because somebody says 10 feet of snow, it does actually matter how dense that snow is because you can, 10 feet of snow, if it's very dense, it's going to be a lot heavier than 10 feet of snow that is maybe very light and fluffy. And that, I would say, was actually pretty important this last winter for a number of houses in the Sierra. I certainly saw a couple of cabins in Mammoth where their roofs just completely collapsed because the snow on top of the house was just too heavy. So that gives you an idea of how much snow we've picked up this season. I was reading one article that it might be the best snow year we've had in 40 years. Now, best, I guess, depends on perspective, probably not from the person whose roof collapsed in Mammoth, but in terms of the ecosystem, water supply, California drought, it's, we're looking pretty good right now. So in California, the snowpack accumulates in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, which is a critical source of water for the state. And just thinking about water in California, if you haven't read the book Cadillac Desert, it is my one of my mentors, I think he said it's his favorite book. He reads it like once a year. It's pretty long. I'm like halfway through it right now, but I'm loving it so far. And it's all about water in California. It's, yeah, it's, it's, that doesn't sound like it'd be exciting, but it's very interesting. All of like the maneuvering and power that goes on with water in California. So why is snowpack important in California? California is a state that is notoriously prone to droughts with the frequency and intensity of droughts increasing due to climate change. Just the easy explanation of that is if the air is warmer, you're going to get more evaporation. And then if you get more evaporation, there's less water in the ground. It just gets picked up and maybe pushed off into Nevada or Utah or something. But there's also nuances to this. For example, I was reading one article that says as the temperature warms up, it can hold more water vapor. So you might actually be able to get more precipitation. So more rainfall with some storms. But I, I'm not exactly a climate expert, so I need to continue to read more. And maybe that'll be some future videos that we do here. So with a population of over 39 million people and a large agriculture in, agri, agricultural industry, the state relies heavily on a consistent supply of water. The Sierra Nevada snowpack provides approximately 30% of California's water supply. Huh, I did not know that. So 30% of California's water supply comes just from the snowpack. 
I don't know exactly know how that works. Oh, it says it in the next sentence. I'm just going to keep reading. With the snowmelt in the spring feeding into rivers and reservoirs that provide water for households, agriculture, and industry. So that's a pretty important paragraph right there. California snowpack makes up 30% of California's water supply. And how that works, because when I was first thinking, I'm like, how do we get the snow into our water supply? But it melts, feeds into the rivers, those go into the reservoirs, and then we use that for households, agriculture, and industry. So the snowpack is not only crucial for water supply, but also for the ecosystem in California. So we're now looking at that second aspect in the kind of the introductory paragraph where it talked about water supply and ecosystem. Now we're moving on to the ecosystem. So snowmelt provides a vital source of water for vegetation, which can impact the food supply for wildlife and the health of forests. In addition, snow acts as a natural insulation layer for soil, protecting it from erosion and keeping the soil moist. The snowpack also contributes to groundwater recharge, which is essential in areas where surface water is scarce. So, scarce? <laughs> um, so they just touched on a lot of different important things here. Just to go over a few of them, very important for vegetation. And that snow melts, it goes into the vegetation. Now, one thing about that that they don't mention here, but it is also important. Part of the California water problem is we also actually have like too much vegetation. There's almost too many trees up in the Sierra right now because in the past, wildfires would move through and they'd burn up a bunch of trees. And then you'd have, let's just use random numbers, you'd have like 20 trees per acre. Whereas we can't just let wildfires burn everywhere these days because there's houses and people and communities so but when you put out fires then the trees don't get cleared out so you end up with a, too many trees basically and then you'll have a hundred trees within that acre all sharing the same amount of water so when it comes to water supply it's not only important how much we're getting but also how how many plants and trees that water is being distributed to and then they also mentioned 39 million people in California, so that's also a big part of the water supply factor out there. Now, the other thing that it that I never really thought about, but it's a natural insulation layer for soil, protecting it from erosion and keeping the soil moist. So I built a wildfire prediction model using machine learning, and it I had the model rank the nine most important, or I put in nine factors, but then I had them rank order what are the most important factors when it leads to extreme wildfire days? So days where you get over 10,000 acres burned in a 24 hour period. And one of the most important factors was soil moisture. And it makes sense. If your soils are dry, your plants are going to be dry. And if your plants are dry, it's a lot easier for a wildfire to become extreme. So snowpack, they don't mention it here, but snowpack would also be very important for wildfire, not only because it provides more water to the plants, but also more water to the soils, which eventually lead to the plants. And then in my model, the number one most important factor when it comes to extreme wildfire days was fuel moisture. So that ties into snowpack and soil moisture. It's, it's when it comes to factors, it's actually, they're all interconnected, but I'm getting off. I could talk about wildfire forever. So let's just focus on snowpack. Um, yeah, we finished that paragraph right there. How is snowpack measured? To understand the amount of water that can be obtained from the snowpack, scientists measure the snow water equivalent, equivalent, man, I can't talk today, which is the depth of water that would result from melting the snowpack. I believe I've always heard that like 10 inches of snow compresses down to one inch of water. It's like a 10 to one ratio. Don't quote me on that though. I need to look that up. So snowpack measurements are taken monthly from December to April, which is typically when the snowpack is at its peak. To measure the snow water equivalent, researchers use a tube called a snow sampler to extract a column of snow from the ground, which is then weighed to calculate the water content. I believe it's like one gram per cubic centimeter of water. That's how much it weighs. So the measurements are taken at different locations throughout the Sierra Nevada mountain range and are used to create a snow survey, which helps estimate the amount of water 
that will be available in the spring and summer months. So, yeah, that, that one of the snow maps that I was just looking at splits it up into the North Sierra, Central Sierra, Southern Sierra. And right now it looks like the Southern Sierra has picked up the most snowfall this season. They are well above average for this point in time and actually above average. They've already picked up more snow than you see in an entire season. So the impact of climate change on California's snowpack. I'm interested to read this because there are nuances with, with this. So I'm interested to see if this article dives into the nuances. So unfortunately, the snowpack in California is shrinking and climate change is the main culprit. Warmer temperatures are causing the snowpack snow to melt earlier in the season, which means less water is available in the spring and summer. So that's actually something that I found in my own research is the amount of days per year that we're in critical fuel moisture territory is basically extending. And it's extended by about 50 days in the last 40 years. So I imagine the exact same thing is true for snowpack. As things get warmer, the day that your snowpack starts melting moves forward. And then the day where you start picking up more snow moves backward because you need low temperatures in order to get snow and then keep snow. So the Sierra Nevada snowpack has already decreased by about 10% over the past century. And it is projected to decrease by an additional 30 to 70% by the end of the century if greenhouse gas emissions are not reduced. So I'm sure the... You might be wondering, 30 to 70 percent, that's a pretty big spread right there. But I'm sure that just involves the different climate models that we have, depending on which actions are taken. If you do a bunch of actions, maybe it'll just be 30 percent. But then if it's basically just like business as usual, then maybe it's that 70 percent number. So the decrease in the snowpack has significant implications for California's water supply and ecosystem. Less snowpack means less water available for agriculture, households, and industry, which could lead to more frequent and severe droughts. So that all kind of makes sense to me. If you decrease your snowpack, which makes up 30% of California's water supply, that would lead to some problems because California certainly needs water for not only households, but also our massive agriculture industry and other industries. So the decrease in the snowpack could also lead to a decline in the health of forest and wildlife that depend on the snowmelt for, for their wild water supply. So it says could also lead, I would say, if the snowpack decreases, it would almost be a guarantee that that would have a negative impact on forests and wildlife. And then I'm always looking at the wildfire perspective. I I'm sure there's somebody who's done a study on this. I'll look for it and then maybe do another video on it. But I would almost guarantee that with earlier spring snowmelt, I actually think I remember reading this, doing the research for my thesis, earlier spring snowmelt is attributed to larger wildfire years. And then the more snow that you get, probably the better, more moisture into your fuels, not as bad of wildfire. So in conclusion, the California snowpack is a vital component of the state's water supply and ecosystem. It plays a crucial role in supporting agriculture, recreation, shout out to all the skiers and snowboarders, and wildlife habitats, and is a critical source of fresh water for millions of people in the state. By understanding the complex processes that govern snowpack formation and melt, we can appreciate the intricacies of California's water cycle and take steps to conserve this precious resource. Whether it's by reducing our water consumption or advocating for responsible water management policies, we all have a role to play in preserving the snowpack and ensuring a sustainable future for California's water supply and ecosystem. So basic summary there, California snowpack, very important for, they say, two main factors when it comes to water supply and ecosystem. Water supply makes perfect sense. 30% of our water comes from the snowpack. So if the snowpack is reduced, we have a smaller water supply. Then ecosystem. One of the main things that I think about is just vegetation in general. Less snowpack means less water for our vegetation. And then I did 
did mention some of the nuances that might have to do with that. And, and I was just mainly thinking of if the air is warmer, it might be able to hold more water so we actually get more snow. I was reading one thing that a scientist said that like our storms this season were maybe 5 to 15% more precipitation because of the warmer atmosphere being able to hold more water vapor. So I don't know if that balances out the earlier snow melt at all, but I would imagine not so much. The earlier snow melt is probably the bigger factor there. And then you end up overall getting less snow as things get warmer. Because it did say it's expected to decrease by 30 to 70% by the end of the century. And then the other one thing that I was thinking about is snowpack most likely very important when it comes to the California drought. And that's where I want to end because that's where we do have some great news in California. About three months ago, 40% of the state was in severe drought or in extreme drought, now about 0%. And then three months ago, I believe it was 90% of the state was in severe drought. Now we're down to about 30%. And we're most likely going to continue to see that improve as it looks like in the middle of next week, we could have some more storms on the horizon. So ending with some good news there, but that was just some science behind the California snowpack. Hopefully you learned something today. I certainly did. See you next time. Thanks for watching.